Jonah allows the fear of his of his flesh crowd, uh, the, the faith, the faith that God had put within him. He, he allowed the fear of his flesh to cloud uh, the faith of his spirit. And, and as a result, the Bible says that Jonah goes the opposite direction and he heads to Joppa to go to Tarshish. He, he heads to go to Tarshish. Now, for those of you who are Bible students, when we come to Tarshish, uh, we come to that city that is spoken of in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Remember that Tarshish was that place that King Jehoshaphat had made an alliance with King Ahaziah to go to for the purpose of getting gold and, and silver and ivory and, and peacock. They, they were after quick success. Uh, that sounds familiar today. A lot of people are out to get quick success. Uh, they're trying to go through all these quick get rich, uh, uh, get rich quick schemes uh, in order to get to success quickly. But, but the Bible says that Ahaziah was a wicked king. And Jehoshaphat being a righteous man that he was walking in the ways of his father, King Asa, decides to get in bed, to, to get in an alliance, to make an alliance with King Ahaziah and God was displeased. So God sent the prophet to King Jehoshaphat and told him uh, that God is furious. He's tired. Uh, he's sick of this and, and God is not going to have it. Uh, but Jehoshaphat, because he had made uh, up in his mind that this was the way he was going, decides uh, to do it his way. And the Bible says uh, that they made ships to go to Tarshish. Uh, but when the ships got to the sea and uh, when they begin to sail, the Bible says uh, that God sent a strong wind uh, that beat against the ships uh, and the ships were beating against each other uh, so violently uh, until the ships wrecked each other. Uh, now notice the Bible never said uh, that people were killed uh, but the ships were wrecked. Uh, could it be that God uh, was not trying to kill Jehoshaphat uh, but he was getting his attention uh, that I am God. Uh, I am the sovereign God uh, and when I have an assignment uh, and purpose for your life uh, you don't have to take shortcuts uh, to get to where I'm trying to take you. Uh, if you stay hidden uh, in my wheel uh, I'll help you get uh, to where I want you to be. Uh, so God wasn't trying to ruin their life. Uh, it was shipwrecking favor. Uh, he did them a favor uh, by wrecking their ships. Uh, Yes, Lord. So notice here in the text here in Jonah, this is the same city that Jonah is heading to. And so the Bible says that he found some ships in Joppa that were heading to Tarshish. Tarshish was a good retreat. It was more pleasant than Nineveh. So he makes his way onto the ship to go to Tarshish. And as the ship is sailing out into the center part of the sea in route to Tarshish, the Bible says that God sends a strong wind and it starts beating against the ship again. And the Bible says that as this wind comes, everybody, all the shipmen on the ship are asking each other, what caused this? What caused such chaos? What, what caused this confusion? Now while they're questioning each other, the Bible says that John was in the hinder part of the ship asleep. Now how in the world could Jonah, the one that caused this, be sleeping in the midst of confusion? Here is Jonah, a saint, sleep in the midst of confusion while the sinners know that something ain't right with this. A saint messed up a sinner's meeting. I don't understand that. The Bible says that the of the ship comes to Jonah and says, hey, hey, sleep. Wake up. Do you not feel what's going on? Do you not sense the chaos that's going on? And the Bible says that he leads them back to the upper deck of the ship. And when they make it back to the upper deck of the ship, the Bible 
Bible says that the men begin to cast a, a lot on each other until the blame fell on Jonah. And when the blame fell on Jonah, they decide to interrogate the man. And they inquire of the man, why did you bring so much confusion against us? What did we do to you? What did you do to bring so much havoc on our lives? We are content with being sinners. We're content with going to the club. We're content with knocking boots. We're content with drinking hypnotic and gin and tonic. We're content with our lives. But you came on this ship and you messed us up. What are you doing? Where do you come from? And who do you serve? Jonah says, I'm just a Hebrew fellow. He says, I serve Jehovah Elohim of Shemayim. He says, I serve the Lord God who made heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. And the Bible says that when Jonah makes mention of this, that fear begins to gather in the hearts of the men because they knew that it was God that caused this. So the Bible says that Jonah says to them, just throw me overboard. He says, if you throw me overboard, I promise you that the wind will cease. The thunder will roll back to its original place. And the lightning will be shut off. And the sun will begin to blast through the clouds again. The Bible says this now. I gotta ask you something because I have a problem with the text. The problem that I have with the text is what's going through Jonah's mind. He sounds suicidal. But he also sounds intelligent. He says, I'm not gonna kill myself. I'm gonna dress it up and make it look like a homicide. And I'm not gonna kill myself, but you do it. Now, what is going through his mind? Is he crazy? Or is he smart? The reason why I ask, is he smart? Is because did he understand somewhere in his mind that through this, somebody's life will be saved? Well, if that's the case, that points me to Jesus. Because Jesus understood that I have to die. Now, I'm not gonna kill myself. You don't do it. crazy? Or is he smart? Well, the Bible says that when he's thrown overboard, that the thunder shut up, the lightning shut up, the wind shut up, and the sun came back. And when this happened, the men that threw him overboard, their life was drawn and turned to God, and they worship and fear the Lord. Now the Bible says, I'm on my way home. that they threw him overboard and a fish swallowed him up. Now many theologians say that it was the size of a fish. It was a whale. They argue what kind of fish was it? Or was it a fish that existed then or exists now? I don't understand. I'm not into all of that. I don't care about that. All I care about is that this was a living and a breathing organism which would suggest it had blood running through its veins. And it had a skeletal structure. It was a living, a breathing organism. So now here is this fish, a living, breathing organism, and it swallows Jonah up. Didn't matter what kind of fish it was, it was a fish. And now here is a grown man inside of the belly of a fish. And the Bible says that as he's in this fish, he prays to God and he says to God, God, I remember the time when I dwelt in your presence, but now this fish has led me to the bottom of the sea, down to where hell resides. He says, I'm at the lowest parts of the sea. The water has come past me and the seaweed is choking me. It's wrapped around my neck, but he says, I will sacrifice unto you the voice 
gifts of thanksgiving. And I will pay that that I have vowed. And when he made a commitment to pay his vows, the Bible says that the Lord did speech to the fish and it regurgitates Jonah out of its mouth. Understand, it was a living, breathing organism. Could it be saints of God? Could it be Calvary Christian Church that God allowed Jonah to see what it felt like to be that anointing locked up on the inside, kicking and fighting to get out? But you were so stubborn and kept it locked inside. Could it be there's a ministry in you, but you keep kicking against the bricks and say, I'm just a singer. I'm just a praise and worship leader. I'm just a teacher. I'm just a preacher. No, 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 no. There's more inside of you. There are visions and dreams locked up inside of you. You are to be CEOs of Fortune 500 companies. You are to run the business. You are to run the show. But since you keep on saying, well, this is all I've been told all my life. 